As API developers, we tend to make certain technology choices when using gRPC over REST. And although gRPC is super performant and boosts developer productivity, REST with JSON on the other hand has been around the block and is human readable, making it easier to debug. Imagine we can enjoy both of these worlds. Well, it turns out ASP.NET has a brand new feature called gRPC JSON transcoding. Let's check it out. Hi folks, welcome to my channel. My name is Fani Reinders and here we dive into great topics from Azure to .NET and everything in between with loads of code demos and interesting experiments, but also taking a look at new features as they are released, like gRPC JSON transcoding, for instance a new extension to ASP.NET Core. You might be thinking, what is this gRPC thing you speak of? Initially, created by Google, gRPC is a modern framework for apps to talk to each other. And it uses features like HTTP2, streaming, binary serialization, and message contracts to deliver real-time and high-performance services. Think of the good old request-response remote procedure calls, but with a little bit of a modern twist. .NET has gRPC support for a while now. Let's quickly look at an example of creating a gRPC service within ASP.NET Core. But before I move on, if you haven't done so already, please like this video and smash that subscribe button to get more content like this in the future. Oh yeah, and click the little bell icon to be notified the next time I upload more content. So let's get back to the video and open up a brand new terminal. All right, so we're inside the PowerShell terminal. Uh, let's create a new folder for the thing that we'll be working on. Uh, let's create a uh, make directory. I'm gonna call this for instance, uh, awesome GPRC. And we're gonna be uh, seeding to the awesome GPRC from there. Right, now that we have that, we use .NET tool to create a new uh, application and we say .NET new GPRC and we'll give it a name awesome service that will go ahead and create a new GPRC service for us okay now let's uh, use Visual Studio Code to check what was created right so inside Visual Studio Code uh, we have this awesome service that has been created I just want to quickly go in here to the properties launch settings and I want to remove the HTTP for now so that we only have an HTTPS TLS uh, connection uh, towards the service. It's just a fine detail but I like to kind of uh, modify that. All right so uh, without touching anything we have a, a greeter service uh, that has a, a bunch of things like a logger and all those kind of things and it says says hello um, and that's basically it. So it, it accepts a request uh, and it responds back with a response uh, message, hello, whatever name was passed into request. And of course, the the request has a bunch of other things uh, like the greet message and all those kind of other things there. Right, so anyway, uh, we are now uh, looking into the protobuf file. Uh, th this is the actual definition of where everything uh, gets kind of generated from. So if you're familiar with protobuf, uh, the gRPC definition, uh, you define your service in here. Uh, so in this case, we have a, uh, a greeter service and we have a RPC rather endpoint called say hello that accepts an hello request and returns an hello response. And in tail, we have a message structure called hello request with a name and we have a hello response with called hello reply basically that is it that that's basically how this work okay now let's quickly run this thing so what we can do is we can um you know cd into the awesome service that we have and go dot net run and this will actually now run our application um that will now listen on a certain port in this case it's localhost 7 Zero five five. Now, if we want to attempt to open up this in a browser, which we can, then we will see that communication to this endpoint can only be made through a gRPC client. And it kind of gives a URL there for more reference. So we cannot really uh, connect to this through the browser. Now, this is where the gRPC uh, JSON transcoding come into play. But first, let's quickly create a client to see how it actually works. I'm just going to go back to the, to the actual terminal. Um, and let's do a, um, a new uh, project, .NET new. I'm just gonna do a console application. Let's give it a name, awesome client, for instance. 
that is a new, like out of the box, a uh, console application. So awesome client, let's quickly go in there and open up another instance of a VS Code. So in there, it's basically a Hello World application. I'm gonna go ahead and remove all these lines of code. Hopefully we have a GitHub Copilot that will help me uh, through this whole thing because GRPC and myself aren't really good friends right now. Um, so, but anyway, let's see what happens. So first of all, I wanna, uh, for instance, get a, say console.write line. We'll say, please, please enter your, well, enter your number. Well, let's call this enter your name. Well, I see that uh, Copilot is uh, is helping us coding this for now. That's just missing a semicolon. Right, so now let's go ahead and say, okay, uh, var name is, and probably Copilot will go and figure that out for now. It will then read uh, the name out. Okay, now let's do a bunch of gRPC things. Okay, now to call a gRPC service um, from a client like this, we need a bunch of packages. I'll just quickly open up the terminal here. We will go ahead and say .NET add package. Uh, it's called google.protobuf. We'll add that package there. And then, um, and another one it's called um, .NET add package your PC net client. And we also would need a, a package called grpc tools, right? So we say uh, grpc.tools. That will now add that later package to the whole um, solution, right? Right, so coming back to our uh, application again. We now need to create a reference. You know, typically you would go and create this uh, protobuf file uh, on the service and have a copy of it. Um, that doesn't always work from a uh, state st uh, standpoint because things change and do you really wanna have duplicate copies of the same thing? Well, okay, um, what we can do is we can tell Visual Studio Code to go and get a linked version of that. Um, and we do that by just creating a new item group. So we can do this from Visual Studio 22 much easier, but we're now in Visual Studio Code, so let's uh, learn to live with it. Um, the first thing we need to do is create a new item group and we call, uh, and we add a new protobuf file in there to include an arbitrary file, which is now wrong. This should point to the actual server file that we have, uh, otherwise we need to copy paste things around. So what we need to do here is in this case, we need to point to awesome service and we say protos and it was greet.proto. Right, that's pretty much it. And then one once important thing is that we need to check out is this GPRC service needs to be client um, because on the server, it is called grpc server. Um, and there we go, it's annotated the server, great. Um, but I'm not actually gonna add the file, um, I'm gonna add it as a link, right? So what we need to do is we need to add the link as protos.greed.proto, and the protobuf tag needs to be closed, and the same goes for the item group one there. Going back to our main program, now let's create a channel to this grpc client. We do this by using var channel, and we'll create a new GPRC channel uh, for a certain address. I'm just gonna resolve the uh, references there. The port here is wrong. So it's 5001 gets generated. Uh, it's wrongly, wrongfully inferred. Um, but what we need to do is it needs to listen on 7055, which is now the one it's listening now to. 7055, right. Now the next thing to do is to create a new client. So in this case, we have a new greeter client. I just need to resolve the, the instances here. And that's basically it. The next thing that we need to do is now actually call the service. So let's say var reply. And we need to say uh, client.say hello async and give me my new request. In this case, uh, the request is um, hello request with a name being the name I've just put in my console. Right, so that is cool. And as GitHub uh, Copilot suggests we want to say greeting and reply dot message. And maybe if we want to kind of add a um, read key there just for kind of 
press any key to continue kind of thing. Right, so let's run this to see what happens. We run this by opening up the, the terminal. And we go .NET run. And it asks, please enter your name. Well, I'm going to say hello, Farney. It says hello, Farney. Great stuff. We have a GPRO server, so we can say hello, Peter. Oops, that doesn't work. .NET run. It wasn't in a loop, though. We say hello, Peter, and then hello, Peter, like that. That's basically it. So now that we know how to implement the gRPC service in ASP.NET Core, let's now add JSON transcoding to the mix to allow us to call this endpoint from an HTTP client or the browser. Okay, now let's add some JSON transcoding support to our service. We're just gonna stop our client in a second. Head over to our service. We maybe also stop our service there. Back at the awesome service, we now need to uh, add a, a NuGet package. And a NuGet package we need to add here is called uh, ASP.NET Core gRPC JSON Transcoding. We go .NET uh, package add or add package. Microsoft.ASP.NET Core gRPC JSON Transcoding. And remember, this is a pre-release, uh, pre so we need to say dash dash pre-release. That will now go ahead and grab the bits uh, from NuGet. Right. Now, one important thing that we need to remember is that we now need to also make a change to our proto file. So going back to our proto file that we have here, the greet.proto file, we now also need to tell it to also expose a certain endpoint to it. So in this case, we can say, um, given an option. So in this case, um, we have an option, Google API HTTP option, and we want to expose the get part. And in this case, we say it's called greeter um, and whatever name we pass in. So in this case, it's name, uh, whatever the name variable is. We'll just uh, delete the body there. And that's basically it. But also now, we have this option, the Google API HTTP. We also now need to um, get it somewhere. So you can go ahead and uh, download the proto files um, that is available. We need to go and download it from a certain uh, repo to get the annotations and stuff like that for our service. So I already created that. So I'm just going to drop it into our, um, of, uh, our service folder. It's uh, Google API and this annotations and HTTP proto files we need to have. Great. Now that's done, I just need to make one small adjustment to this. We need to also import the Google API space that we have already included in our project. We do this by going uh, import, uh, import rather, uh, and this is called Google API annotations or something. So this basically points to this file in this Google directory, the annotations file there. Right, we have that set up and going. All right, so that is basically it for the proto file. One last thing to do is now head on to our services and now we need to tell our service container that we actually want to make use of JSON transcoding. We do this by just saying add JSON transcoding in there. And with that said, it's basically done. Uh, we now can just open up the browser. We say CD awesome service and say .NET run. And if it's good, it will go and listen to this endpoint. So open up this endpoint in a browser. We will get the stock standard question. But now when we go to v1 greeter and give it a name like Fani, it will now say message hello Fani. And this works basically with everything else. So in this way, it's now set up to kind of allow us to call gRPC endpoints using plain old JSON. That is it. Now we can enjoy the performance of gRPC and the friendliness of JSON. But you might be thinking, JSON transcoding is not a new concept. And what about gRPC web? Both JSON transcoding and gRPC web allows us to call gRPC services from the browser, but the way they do it is the key difference. With gRPC web, the client calls the gRPC service from the browser using the gRPC web client and protobuf. But this requires the client app to generate a gRPC client. 
which is fine for sending small messages. JSON transcoding, on the other hand, allows the client apps to call gRPC services as good old RESTful APIs with JSON. No code generation or knowledge needed about the gRPC service. Which brings me back to a little thing called OpenAPI. In .NET 7 RC1 release, there is experimental support for actually generating OpenAPI specifications for gRPC transcoded REST APIs. Let's have a look. Okay, so now quickly, let's quickly go back to our service here, stop the service, and we need to add a couple of things here. Like I mentioned, we want to add some swagger support. Let's add some swagger to the service. To add Open API to our um, project, it's as easy as adding a new get package. Um, it's .NET add package, and it's called uh, Microsoft ASP.NET Core gRPC. And you guessed it, Swagger. Also, we need to use the pre-release tag to be able to add it. And that will now bring down the Swagger bits to our service. Great, so now when that is done, so what we wanna do is we wanna go boulder.services.add uh, grpc Swagger in there. But also we wanna add another thing called add Swagger Gen. Swagger gen, and that should take care of the definition generation for our, our endpoint. Great. Um, but we also want to pass in some options in there. So we, we want to be able to say this is the version one and a title and all sorts of other metadata that is bound to, uh, to this uh, Swagger. Now, the next thing we do is in our application pipeline, we need to now wire up Swagger. And we say app.use Swagger. And we need to say, okay, well, we want to use Swagger, but also we want to use the Swagger UI. And we'll accept the defaults that is generated from us using GitHub Copilot. Um, and it's called, in this case, Swagger V1, Swagger JSON, and it's awesome service one, V1. And that's about it. Um, and then when we open up a terminal again, to actually run it, we say .NET run and Lo and behold, when we browse to the endpoint again and we go to slash swagger, we'll get a beautiful swagger page here. And this is your stock standard swagginess that you'll get. You have your versions, you have your, uh, your client there. You can try it out, for instance, you give it a name and execute it. It will execute fine, perfectly. And that is how you add open API to swagger. That was it. Just by adding a bunch of NuGet packages and a few lines of code, we can now bring REST and gRPC even closer together. What is your favorite between gRPC and REST? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to like and subscribe my channel for more awesome content like this.